Let's move on to our homework. We brought it back. We didn't bring back the professor. Because not a real professor. Uh, Mad Mike is don't, don't I, question Mad, Mad Mike up until now has been an executive producer on the show. Thanks I to I ran his ass off the show. Let's call it for what it is. We'll here. let we'll let him have that while he's still executive producer for the next week. Um, that so I ran his ass so, off the show. He's scared. Okay. All right. He's scared. That's right. fine. Sure. Sure. He, maybe, but anyways, what? but we maybe he's back, going to get a degree. But we brought back the part we could all agree on, and yeah, that is absolutely. the matches and. Absolutely. Uh, we, had, uh, uh, Matt and I had talked about this idea to recap because it was late in the show, probably, uh, where we brought this back. Um, or maybe it was before, I, whatever. It was, it's, it's been a long week. I'm 40 now. I can't remember anything. Um, oh, wow. and <laughs> sticky notes. <sword. laughs> That's my new sticky excuse noise. for everything. So, I know I feel. Sticky noise. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, uh, what the hell was I doing? Homework. homework. Oh, hey, homework. So our homework <laughs> for this week was Adam Cole versus Kyle Riley. I believe this was tagged as the match without honor. It was a no holds barred Basically. match for the title at Final Battle 2016, and it was a wild one. Oh, Holy yeah. crap! Hammerstein Ballroom, ECW vibe, along with a near ECW match actually. So thumbtacks, tables, trash cans, bleeding, bleeding. And, and lots of bleeding. Yeah. Lots of lots of bleeding. <laughs> the Crimson I, Mask was in full I, effect. I will say, I don't miss the, listening to the ROH crowd. The crowd? Yeah. What's your problem Why? with the? Whoa! Hold oh, up! Fuck PG chant! Like, get the fuck out of here! It's 2016. It said what? They fuck. chanted "fuck PG." Okay. Like, yo, it was a yo. It's Hammerstein Ballroom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. They should be more creative. This is what. Well, Okay, I'm not. No, nope, they should be nope, more creative. Nope, I'm not taking the bait. Uh, Matt, if that uh, was 2005, you can sure. answer all the robots out there, Mad Mike. We're yeah, gonna right. move on and talk Zeke, about yeah, the Zeke. robots, the R O H bots. Exactly, R-O-H Zeke. Bots. What did you think of this match? You said you were rewatching. You watched it the first time. Through, yeah, right? I watched this because I was um the first time I watched. It, I was like looking for stuff to watch. I was like, wow, um, I kind of forgot this match happened. Like I knew this match happened, but it was like. Just in the recess of my mind, I rewatched it. Like, yeah, now I want to watch the NXT version now. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I can't wait for this one. But like, I like I said, I'm behind NXT, but I'll definitely like you know jump ahead to watch this one now, some way somehow. May have to, maybe have to borrow someone's uh, Peacock account and just <laughs> watch this. But no, I thought it was a really good match. Um, it really shows how like underrated Kyle Riley is, really. Everyone kind of forgets that Kyle Wright is not like just a tag team wrestler. Like he can yeah. actually, like, yeah. he can actually go. Like yeah. he can actually, like, you know, he's actually pretty scary. When he was in our team, he's like, yeah, that that dude can probably face some more Joe and have a five star match. Yeah, you yeah. know. But I think this match with um, they're gonna have NXT is gonna be showing that why Kyle Riley was kind of a like underrated star. I mean, we already know what Adam is, but you know, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. wait for this match, man. No, it was great, Matt. What did you think of this match? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't just watch the uh, the 2016 final battle match. This is actually part three of basically a, a pay-per-view trilogy right. between Cole and O'Reilly that starts at final battle 2015, and then they go at it again at um, WrestleMania weekend in Dallas. Right. And then this is the and this is the blow off. Um, the first match is really good. Uh, the second match is longer and almost starts to have that NXT main event kind of feel. Yeah. Uh, this match here is pretty awesome too the really crazy part about this match is like what everything it had to follow this is the main event on a show that has like oh my god it's got young bucks versus briscoes on it i think osprey's on this show it's yeah, got yes. some great stuff on it and they have to come out and follow this that is a that is a tall order um and zeke is absolutely right like like kyle o'reilly is He's a dude. He's a dude. Yeah, it's the, um. It's, yeah, the match. Right I don't want to use the term anchor for a uh, you know respected professional wrestler like Bobby Fish, but he's almost been like an anchor holding Kyle O'Reilly down in this tag team. Kyle O'Reilly needs to be free, man. <laughs> he needs to be a singles well, wrestler. This is the guy. Like, and, and I I think I, I mean judging just judging by this match is now, and I think Kyle now is is is. Well advanced beyond where he was at that point in 2016. Right. Um, I think there, you know, the match at Takeover is going to be unbelievable. But let's not because forget- of how far Kyle O'Reilly has progressed in the WWE system. That's really kind of you know we, we like to dunk on you know the Performance Center all the time. Kyle O'Reilly has really improved in that system, and uh, I think it's going to show on uh, and Takeover. Right, Zeke. 
But I was I understand where the anchor thing is coming from, but let's not forget that Bobby Fish is also a great wrestler. Like, there's yeah. also a match with Adam Cole versus Bobby Fish, and that match is cool. really fr- freaking good. I mean, like, I guess to them they have different like gears. Like, they're, they have a different gear when they're a tag team, and they have a, obviously a, a crazy gear when they're like singles and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think they're like one of the best like tag teams like to come together because they're just two great singles competitors it's like you know what screw it let's become a tag team mm. but everyone kind of forgets oh they're just a tag team they're they're not no no they're just two beasts just waiting to pop out I, and i don't know how they're gonna do this whole storyline but i want to see adam versus Cole, like bobby fish too or at least bobby fish versus um someone else from mm. the I, I, could, area. I could see us eventually having an undisputed fatal four one, and that would be great. Oh yeah, yeah, and that would I, be. I, I could see that happen. But, yeah, but how are people going to compare it to like the Shield Triple Threat? And like, it's going to be like the because oh, I don't man. think, in my opinion, the Shield Triple Threat wasn't that like it ain't live up to my hype. No, the Shield Triple Threat wasn't great, but what was better was the night all three members of the Shield became the WWE champion. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was, was real wild. good. That was wild. That's. The... <laughs> <laughs> but I like, doubt wild shit. I doubt they'll like do kind of like the same thing like well we're gonna make Cole NXT champion and we're gonna have uh you know Bobby Fish Roderick and Kyle O'Reilly in a uh, fair four way I was like nah, I don't think they should do that they probably just have their own feud and let them fight out because that would be even more money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah I mean who knows they they put the they put the horsewoman in a fatal four way match I mean yeah that was great but like yeah I mean I, but I, I think there's definitely a world where you can have an undisputed fatal four way. But the problem even for the, even for the NXT title. I think the problem would be would be the fallout. Like what's gonna happen after that? Who's mm-hmm. gonna go to SmackDown? Who's gonna stay in NXT? Who's gonna go to Raw? Because you can't just have like, well, since you know, who's gonna send Bobby Bobby and uh, Kyle up to Raw and tag teams? Like, no, no, they had a whole blood feud. What are mm-hmm. we talking about? What are we doing? So, <laughs> so I mean, who says any of them have to move? Yeah. But yeah. Even like, I mean, with look that, at Sean Bud Gargano. They had a blood feud that lasted for years, and they're both still But that's still two people. We're talking about four people. They will have to cross paths eventually. Yeah. So we're going to keep running that to, like, just run it, like, wh- whoever gets the smoke gets the smoke it, at that it point? It works for comics. I, I think it works. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, mean, like, <laughs> I think it works really well. I, you know, I think I think C's really good, mostly um, until right. you have the championship for 300 days, um, for letting well, these guys have cool-off periods. Right. And that's why then Kyle comes back and does crazy shit. Right. Right. You know, I mean, it, it, you know, I think I think that's been re- they have been the best at something like that. Right. I mean, this match is uh, so I would just say that, that um, I feel like I'm not sure if this is exactly what what Zeke is driving at, but I feel like the the the, the longevity of Undisputed Era and Gargano and Ciampa in, in NXT over the past years uh, has at this point become a detriment to the product like part of nxt's appeal has always kind of been like that turnover and watching those guys kind of grow in advance and then graduate right. no right. one's been graduating i mean people have been graduating but like there, there's the this core stars. of guys that are not moving up right i want to see kyle o'reilly get on the main roster because i think of all four of those undisputed era guys he's the one guy who has an I, honest real shot at making it on the main roster dude, he could be a great uh, I, I don't mean, know about the other three guys counterpoint keith lee well, I mean, uh, I, I mean I, I'd I rather see him say it NXT. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have mind. I, yeah, better than him not doing anything on the main roster right yeah, now. Yeah, that, that, that's why I I think it's perfectly fine the way it is. Because if you look at, like, if you look at just the, the roster of Raw, right. how many people on that roster have been in, like, blood feuds before and yeah. still coexist in catering perfectly fine with each other? Yeah. It's the yeah. same principle. Yeah. Issues. Like we we think we think it's different because NXT has had these blood feuds and then they send people up, but Raw and SmackDown have been doing this for years. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns share a freaking locker room technically right now. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I mean I, at the same time I mean, I'm not sure that's acceptable just because it's something that WWE does okay, on a regular yeah, basis. Yeah, I know, but Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio are still on the same show. Yeah, it's very have not now. Have not talked to each other since they got back. Is Murphy even still dating Aaliyah? Do we know? Do we care? <laughs> they, um, no and no. I hope not. Yes, exactly. Um, no That's and what I I'm hope saying. not. <laughs> people forget. Yeah, yeah. But people I think, forget. I Most think, of the writers. 
I think the like st- stuff like this, why we should like, like I don't like how they just drop things. Like they'll just send people to the, um Raw and SmackDown, and be like, well, we're just gonna forget it. And like that's the problem. But that's that, I mean that's WWE. It's no that, continuity. That's, that's a lot of WWE problem. And though. like yeah, if they're gonna if let's, I'm not saying they're gonna do this. I'm not saying they're gonna do the the undisputed tr- um fair four way. But if they ever decide to do that decision, you're gonna have to finagle some writing to a point where these guys never cross again, mm-hmm. or they're just they're separated for so long things have cooled off mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's gonna be hard because these are these are four talented guys. Mm-hmm. You know, it, this wasn't just like oh we got some three guys who who need to learn the ropes and then like big guy main guy was the, the best of the best. No. They can all carry a main event scene, which they've done before. <laughs> Encounter on that, Dave Bonner. How can Randy Orton be in the locker room with anyone? Right, like he could, like didn't kill half the roster <laughs> like, in 2010. I mean, it's just it's just one of those things where like you, you just need to. But we we've kind of circled. We've used this line from time to time. You got to show your work. Like it, yeah, Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio may be able to coexist in the same environment again someday. But you've got to at least do the the just do the the minimum work to explain why this man who nearly gouged another man's eye out are able to just be in the same space together without absolutely trying to murder each other yeah even just like hey yeah. we had our thing and we respect each other and now and we moved on you know like something yeah. like that so, we, so, we had to sit down uh, over the yeah. weekend and we, we hashed it out you yeah, know right, yeah <laughs> okay i but, mean i question i question where your mind's at ray that you would trust this person again but oh, do whatever you yeah, want yeah we don't know i haven't noticed scum, on, scum so I haven't noticed on SmackDown. Does Ray still cover the one eye? No, uh, so that, it's no. been surgically repaired. That's been the retcon that you oh, guys that, missed. Okay, that, okay. That, that's the sure. that's what you guys missed. Like it's been surgically repaired. Uh, the, hey man, the, 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 they they can do a lot. I had surgery five times in my left eye. I bet you did. But they can they can <laughs> they can do a lot with LASIK surgery these days. Okay, they, they can. So, they yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. But so. if anything, from the Undisputed Era, I think Kyle would be a great person to send to SmackDown and become a great IC champion. So, oh, and course, by the yeah. way, we do we have to make that a five way now that uh, Cameron Grimes owns the rights to the undisputed era. Oh, what? Wait, yeah, what? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hold on, wait, 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 pause, pause, pause. Well, wait, here, here, here's here's how this needs to play out, okay? Because we've joked about this too. We joked about the fact that Bobby Fish does not know any of this is happening. Oh Jesus! So he shows <laughs> yes, up yes. In, in three months. He comes back to NXT still in his undisputed era gear not knowing that Cameron Grimes now owns the rights to the Undisputed Era and therefore owns him too, Bobby Fish becomes Cameron Grimes' butler. Go. Let's yeah. go. And, call, and calls him Robert, and then everyone's like, oh, you ripped us off of AEW. Yeah. There you Whoa. go. Wow. 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 All right. At that point, uh, Mike. Oh, wait, wait. We have homework. We have homework again. And I, I'm going to have to share this you with didn't our. You asked me really about the match. I enjoyed the match. You, you just complained about the crowd and I moved on. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I you watched it? I, I wasn't done. Okay. I complained about the crowd, but the match was really fucking good. <laughs> I thought when, that was. No, O'Reilly. It felt, like, it felt like the cliff notes. So. No, when O'Reilly leaned back into the thumbtacks to apply the pressure. For oh, the... yeah. Oh, no. oh, oh yeah. God. That was terrible. It was oh. good. It was terrible. Vicious match. Just no. 